What is going on YouTube fitness family? We are back here, Zoo Culture Gym, and we are hitting a full back and shoulder workout. And so I know I do a lot of top exercise videos, but I wanna walk you guys through like actually watching me train, like through a full session, what that looks like, the volume, the tempos. I'm gonna walk you through why I'm doing what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. So full off season workout, trying to get fucking huge right now. Stuff for to do, let's get into this training session. All right, first exercise, we are going to do a pullover. And it's not something I tend to start with, but one thing I like to do is switch up my exercise order because that's just another way to just switch up the stimuli for your body. If you're used to like always hitting a pull down and then always hitting a row and then always hitting your pullover, what also this is gonna do, it allows me to probably go a lot heavier on my pullover because I'm less fatigued. So what I'm gonna do is start by really firing up the lats. So I'm gonna use a rope. You can use a V grip, you can use a straight bar for these. Uh, they're all gonna provide different advantages. The advantage to a rope is that it allows me to fully supinate my palms. So as you can see, my hands are gonna be facing up towards the ceiling. And what that's gonna allow me to do is keep it in the lats. When I pronate, it's gonna usually cause it to go more in my triceps and into my rear delts. If I supinate, it'll really allow me to scoop through and keep this impetus in my lats through my teres. So the teres muscle is the muscle right where you feel like that real crazy burn right underneath your, underneath your armpit sometimes when you do lats. That's the teres muscle. Or if you've had a deep tissue massage and that massage therapy just gets right under your armpit, you're like, oh my God, that's terribly painful. That's your terry. So this is what we're really targeting is that lat all the way up right underneath the armpit. So what I'm gonna do, form cues on this is stretch at the top of the rep, really open up and then dig underneath. Really good posture, but what I'm doing is leveraging over the weight as well. So I'm leaning over it, getting a big stretch keeping a nice proud chest, squeezing underneath and really focusing on the eccentric portion. So I'm getting a good one count squeeze at the bottom. So squeeze in for one and then slow on that eccentric. By milking these eccentrics, I'm really driving a ton of blood flow into the desired muscle groups, specifically lats. What this is gonna allow me to do once I get closer to a pull down movement on my second or third exercise, I'm gonna have so much blood flow that it's gonna be very easy for me to activate the tissue that I'm trying to hit. As opposed to if I was gonna go cold into a compound movement, I probably would be less able to connect mentally with that mind muscle connection as if I have some sets, some warm up sets, some potentiation sets that'll get me ready for that second movement pattern. Oh, so I'm almost at failure with those negatives. So I'm gonna start ripping through some slightly faster ups, still good form. Still good posture with that lower back, chest open. So I did about 10 reps with really good negative, slow eccentric, and then fired through five to 10 slightly faster reps to really get that activation, that blood flow going. So I'll probably just go up and wait for three to four sets here. And like I said, really trying to just get as much blood flow, feel that really good burn right through the lat all the way down through that lower lat. Like I said, three to four sets. I'm gonna try to go for that eight to 10 slow and then rip through some basically pass failure, fast reps at the end of the set. I get a question a lot about rest times. How much rest time should you be taking between your sets? I'm gonna tell you, it depends. It's very exercise specific. So for these, not quite as compound, a little bit more isolated. It's not like a heavy T-bar row where I'll sometimes take three, four minutes between sets because so taxing the CNS, so aerobic. This probably take about 90, whereas if it's like a tricep push down, for example, probably take like 60. Just because I don't need as much rest to let my lungs get back underneath me. Plus if it's a more of acute, smaller muscle group, you kind of want to drive more volume and reduce rest time so you don't have to go as heavy for let's say delts or triceps or biceps. Whereas like you do a leg press, some of my leg press sets take me three minutes, but I also take three to five minutes rest after those sets. So there's just no way, if I took 60 seconds, I just lose all uh, obviously performance in my next set because I'd be so winded and gassed and burning still. So like right now, I'm getting up to about that 90 second mark, I was watching the clock and it feels just about right to get back into this because it wasn't so CNS and aerobically taxing. So. That's what I'd say is gauge it based on the exercise. The more compound it is, the more aerobically taxing, the more rest you're inevitably gonna need. 
to perform at a high level on the next set. All right, second exercise, kind of blood flow already in the back from four sets there. So now I'm gonna hit his a V grip pull down with this grip. If you guys are not using some sort of lifting grip, throw grip, versa grip, I don't care what you get. You're wasting your time because if you're doing any time under tension, bodybuilder specific training, for back, it's insane to think that your forearms and grip strength is gonna keep up with your entire back. So that's why it's important to have something. It's not gonna take 100% off, and also my forearms are not struggling. I've been using these for the last like eight years, and everybody points out my forearms because they're kind of stupid. So I don't think it's really to their detriment. So what we're gonna do here is really good scapular retraction. So every rep, I'm gonna reach for that top of the rep. So I'm gonna reach. A lot of people, it's a mistake they make. They do the pull downs here, and they'll stop here or here. Reach for that, open up your lats, and then dig it in underneath. Squeeze those elbows in, really proud chest. Reach, squeeze. Slow on that eccentric. Milk that eccentric. Drive, squeeze. Reach, reach, reach. Pull those shoulders down and back. Pull that chest open. Stretch, slow eccentric, drive. <clears throat> so you can always be a little bit more explosive on the concentric, the down as you are on the eccentric. <clears throat> Going for 12 to 15 here. Really solid start. After getting all that blood flow in, using those rope pullovers, I just have so much activation already in my lats, through my rhomboids, through that mid back. So I pull these down, that engagement and that mind muscle connection is extremely easy for me because I didn't hop right into a compound. Not to say you can't hop right into a pull down, but if you do, start with two to three warm up sets where you're really trying to get that blood flow. We start to connect your mind to the muscles you're trying to target. It's not as important for powerlifting to create the mind muscle connection. For bodybuilding, it's incredibly important. Especially when you're talking about shaping your body, bringing up weak areas. A lot of people that have weaknesses or imbalances, some of it's genetic, but some of it's because when they're doing back there, they're just pulling to pull without really focusing on what they're actually trying to target. So if you can do that, start to really connect with, let's say, your lats separately from your rear delt or from your mid back or right those stabilizing muscles right up your spine all that lumbar all of those being able to disconnect or connect to those muscle groups separately it's going to make a huge difference to your training all right we did pullovers some heavier close grip pull downs now i want to hit a little bit more mid back lower back kind of get that more density right up the spine also do those lower lats one of my favorite exercises it's going to be a deficit row a lot of times i hit these on the smith machine but it's taken so i'm just gonna do free bar um so the big keys on this are going to be i like to set up i have four boxes here so i'm about a foot off the ground i'd say about nine inches but it's really not that necessary if your mobility is not there i have very good mobility so i like to set this a little higher up so i can really reach for the ground not going super heavy on these i'm gonna start with just a 45. i'm gonna strap in about thumbs width from where those guides are I'm gonna use my legs to lift it up for that first rep, stand all the way up. And then I'm gonna put the toes right towards the front of the box. I'm gonna reach for the floor with a proud chest, reach down towards basically my toe box on my shoes. And then I'm gonna drive up slightly with the chest, slow on that eccentric, reach for that stretch and squeeze up. So with these, the big impetus is a huge stretch at the bottom of the rep and then a really nice peak contraction. These, we're not gonna try to go super heavy just for that simple reason of, we're really trying to push more impetus through range of motion and stretch media hypertrophy than top end load. So really controlling that eccentric, proud chest, squeeze that lower lat. Slow on that eccentric. Nice slight knee bend. Reach for the ground, touch, drive. Oof. 
Go for 12 to 15 here. aren't super heavy the amount of engagement I get all the way from the low back all the way through my lower lats it's crazy it pumps insane so give it a try definitely worth that in your routine plus way less pressure on your lower back but if I were to go a super heavy explosive three to four plate row it's just not worth it risk reward we'll do an isolateral lower lat kneeling row so those exercise people see on my Instagram like you don't actually do that, bro. But yes, I actually do. It's one of my favorite exercises. So what I'm gonna do is really, I love isolateral work for back, meaning one side at a time. Because, for your reason, number one, that allows you to move very ergonomically with the movement pattern. And you can really lean into it, get a better stretch. Then if you have both at once, better scapular retraction. You can also hit a little bit better hold at the bottom of your reps. And also corrects any imbalances. So if your left side, left lat, or left back, is more developed or less developed than the right. You obviously rectify that and try to do some more isolateral work to make sure they're even out. So what I'm gonna do is grab left hand first. I'm gonna drop the left knee down. Get so much cross body stretch and then squeezing down underneath, driving the elbow down and in. Reaching to the top, huge stretch that lat. In and squeeze. Bracing through the core, big open. And as you can see, I'm almost leaning that way, which allows for me to get even better lat contraction and isolation as compared to if I was straight over it. Oh. Oh. Whew. So I had 12 to 15 there. And then the good thing about this too is they're not as CNS taxing as let's say that's been over row. So I'm pretty easily able to go from one hand right in the other. So I'm not taking a lot of time. With a lot of people, I think they avoid any type of single arm movements because they're like, well, I don't only have a certain amount of time in the gym. Well, technically the left side of my body's resting while I do my right hand. So I don't have to necessarily take huge rest times between arms because I'm using the complete opposite side of my body and I'm not super aerobically taxed. It's not a huge CNS compound movement, a little bit more of an isolation movement. So I don't need to rest quite as long as a, compared to those with bent over rows. It's taking two to three, maybe four minute rest between those three sets. So like I said, 12 to 15 here, big stretch reach, dig in, squeeze. All right, next exercise, we're gonna be doing a overhand grip so more of a pronated grip and it's almost to be emulatory of that first pullover we did try to pull nice and low i'm gonna go kneeling so i get more stretch to the top of the rep so these are gonna be much lighter than my pullovers or pull down sorry that i was doing with the reverse grip with the supinated this one i'm hitting more mid to upper back so i'm gonna tuck the hips forward lean back and squeeze in this is the hands are facing the other way it's gonna complete completely different group of muscles than if when I'm supinated with the grip. Supinated, you can think of like bowl of soup, palms facing towards you, pronated, palms facing away from me like they are right now. Big stretch, open, tuck underneath. So I'm leaning back a little bit more, hitting with some more back muscles right along the spine as well. Reach, open. Oof. So for this food pattern, it's not as heavy. It's a little bit more of a compromised position than here. You got a lot of strength. Here, it's more of a pull, almost like a pullover. So you're not gonna have quite as much leverage. Almost a mechanically disadvantageous position, especially towards the bottom of the rep. So what I really do is pull the shoulders down and back, retract the scaps, make sure you're getting more engagement in your back, opposed to like rear delt and biceps. So you're gonna inevitably get a little bit of bicep engagement on this, just do the hand positioning, but 
You want to make sure you're feeling it more in the back, feeling more biceps and grip. Go a little lighter on this. If you don't have these special grips, you can do this with handles. So use two handles and turn them slightly forward. So we're going to be on to delts. I like to back and delts usually together. Sometimes I with, with chest. I get a lot of delt activation on my chest. If you guys see me do those crazy stretches on my flies. So I get a lot of delt, especially front delt. So sometimes I like to hit my delts when they're a little less fried on my back day, especially medial delt. So what I'm gonna do here is a iso lateral raise seated, true laterals, and then I'm gonna superset that with a seated upright row variant on the V grip. So I'll show you how that looks. But first we're gonna start here. We're gonna wrap underneath, get a big stretch to that medial delt, lift up, squeeze, slow on that eccentric. Wrap underneath, stretch, lift up, squeeze slow on the eccentric. So you can see I literally have 20 pound dumbbells. If I wanted to do like 60, 70 pound lateral raise, I could, but I'd probably just be firing so much traps and momentum as opposed to true medial delt where you want to get that kind of crazy cap shoulder look. It's going to come from raising more like this. You don't have to do this light, but I just prefer to get a lot more control, five to six second on the down. Good one second squeeze to the top. Try to deactivate the traps as much as possible. Forward lean, sit up on it, squeeze. I'm gonna hit as many as I can with that slow negative and speed them up a little bit. Burn there now. I'm gonna basically just turn around right here. I'm gonna use a V grip here. And I'm actually gonna go over hand grip. So I'm gonna reach so my thumbs are pointed down. What this does is it's gonna allow my elbows to drive up. Pinkies are gonna track your elbows, or your elbows are gonna track your pinkies, sorry. So when I lean back and, and do a basically a modified upright row lying back, my elbows are gonna trend up no matter what I wanna do. So here, see how my elbows? go nice and high, what that's gonna do is keep it more in the delt and less in the trap. Just do that, angular positioning. So big squeeze, lying back, slow on the down, looking it in, reaching through the legs, stretch the delt, and obviously you're gonna get some trap engagement here. But the more you lie back, the less you'll get trap, the more you'll get medial delt. So same thing, eight to 10, super slow negative, and then fire through some of those past failure reps, a little bit more momentum, because you've already built up so much fatigue, the targeting muscle, you still have so much mind muscle connection, but then you can use a little momentum towards the end of your set. You have a lot of hypoxicity built up, you got a lot of fatigue built up, a lot of blood flow, much less risk of injury than if you just rip it for the first rep, probably have very little, a little activation, mind muscle connection. So, so something I use a lot is that pre-exhausting with that super slow eccentric and firing through, maybe between like three and 10, Slightly faster up to the end of my set. So I'll probably hit this for three circuits right here. All right, that's a wrap. So I hope you guys enjoyed actually watching more of like an actual organic training session. A lot of times when I film my talks at top exercise, I'm actually working out while I do it. So it's not disingenuous in that sense, but this I want to show you like a full top to bottom workout, why I'm doing what I'm doing. I felt like I hit a lot of like really good variations of different muscle groups. So some lats, some mid back, some traps, some upper back. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. It means the world to me. I'm putting out so much content for you guys. So hit that sub button. Also make sure to send this to somebody who would need an insane back day. Without further ado, also use code Eric for all of your athlete, athlete apparel. Link will be in the description below. Without further ado, I will catch you guys on the next video.